Sometimes life leads us a merry dance and we need a little bit of TLC. Mela's resident chef Utica knows exactly what's required and she's whipping up some yummy comfort food. When the temperature starts to take a nose dive, I start to crave the comfort of hearty meals. For me, it's not just about settling the rumble in my tummy, it's also about nourishing the soul. On my menu today, a spicy Indian version of shepherd's pie to go with that crunchy green vegetables and for dessert, a Moorish pecan and banana cake with my version of a cheats caramel sauce. I'm starting out with the shepherd's pie and for that, let's get the potatoes and this goes into a pan. I peel them and cut them into little cubes. Some water going in. And bring that up to the boil. Season the potatoes with salt. Just a touch. Let's get started with the lamb mince. Let's preheat a pan and pop in some oil. already hot and the first spice is going in a bay leaf and cinnamon stick some cumin seeds as well and fry them until they turn a shade darker and there is really a difference between a shepherd's pie and a cottage pie a shepherd's pie is made with lamb mince and a cottage pie is made with beef mince or any other mince onions going in and season the onions with salt what could be more comforting than spicy lamb mince topped with creamy potato? It does take a little time, but anything delicious does. The potatoes are bubbling up. I'm just turning down the heat slightly. You don't want them to fall apart in the water and turn into a great big mush. And now some ginger and garlic paste going in on the side of the pan. And red chilli. I love it quite spicy. And don't over fry the chili or overcook it. You don't want that to burn. In goes the lamb mince. And use a wooden spoon, scrape the bottom of the pan and stir that through. I'm gonna cook this down for a couple of minutes before I add the remaining spices. But in the meantime, here's some fresh thyme from my garden. This smells amazing. I've fried off the mince, the oil does separate. And now add a teaspoon of ground cumin. And this is roasted spices, so you can add them right at the end. They just need a touch of heat to release their magic. Two teaspoons of ground coriander. It's also roasted coriander. A level teaspoon of garam masala. And a generous pinch of turmeric. This looks delicious. I wish you could smell it. Tomatoes. Please add a bit of moisture and prevent the mince from drying out. It gives you this lovely sauce that coats the mince. The riper the tomato, the better the flavor. If you don't have super ripe tomatoes, just use the tin variety. They work absolutely fine. And there we have it, that's our spicy mince done. And the potatoes also look ready, let's have a look. Yes, they're starting to break down quite easily. And the trick about making mashed potato is to add water when you need. You don't want to be straining those potatoes and draining off the excess water. Let's mash this. The pan's still on. There's a little excess moisture in here and I'm gonna cook that off until the potatoes are smooth and dry. And I also use a fork just to make sure all the potatoes broken down. And next ingredient going in, some cream. Work the cream in. And I can see this creamy mashed potato forming. It's hard to resist. Now, time for some butter. It's quite a sloshy sort of mashed potato, but remember it's going to dry out in the oven. The last ingredient, egg yolks. I've got two egg yolks here. Now add some of that hot mashed potato into the egg. If you do it the other way around, it's going to, to scramble. Now pour that in. And stir. 
And that's the mashed potato done. Now I've got a pie dish here that I've greased lightly. And spoon some of that mash into the base. And spread that around. I love the way the mashed potato absorbs the flavors. And now the lamb mince. I'm leaving the time in. If you have fussy eaters, you can remove it. Now for the topping, scoop that over. And then use a fork just to smooth that over. You can use the back of a spoon as well. This goes into a preheated oven at 180 degrees Celsius for about 35 to 45 minutes. Time now to tidy up the kitchen before we get on with dessert. Starting out with the pecan banana, the first ingredient, soft butter. Not really a fan of margarine. I always recommend using butter. Once it's pale in color, gradually add the sugar. And now we're ready for the next step which is the eggs. Add them one at a time. And with each egg, a teaspoon of flour. The next one. That's ready. The egg also helps that sugar dissolve. This is perfectly smooth. Flavor this with vanilla essence. And next, a teaspoon of ground cinnamon. Next, in goes the self raising flour. We've got 550 mils here. Half a teaspoon of bicarb. And pecan nuts. Quite a thick batter, just swirl around, use a spatula and almost press the flour and butter together. Now the banana goes in, 300 mils of mashed banana and overripe bananas work best in a banana cake, they're full of flavour, so always save those bananas for a cake. Now the milk goes in, full cream milk that is, and work those ingredients together. Quite gently, it does tend to splash a bit. And here I've greased a baking tin with butter and lightly dusted it with flour as well and this prevents the cake from sticking. And spoon that in. Just smooth that down. Tap the tin and get the batter to settle. The cake goes into a preheated oven at 170 degrees Celsius for about 40 minutes. And I've made one already. It smells fantastic. And as you can see, it's golden brown and really, really soft. I love serving crunchy veggies with a shepherd's pie. Now you can use peas and carrots in the actual mince, but I prefer serving something quite green on the side. I've got asparagus here and broccoli. I'm going to pop the asparagus into some boiled water and cook this over a medium heat for about two minutes. Just lightly steam them and then serve with salt and pepper. Now in goes the broccoli. Take care not to overcook it. You don't want them turning grey and mushy. Now plunge these veggies into iced water and that stops the cooking process. Pressing that down with my hand to make sure they're submerged. You can see they're bright green in colour. Just the way I like it. And lay them on a serving platter. Drizzle with some olive oil. And season with salt and pepper. That's the veggies done. And for that caramel sauce, I've got some fresh cream in a pan. It doesn't need to come up to the boil. Just hot will do nicely. Add the tinned caramel. 
and use the spoon to work that in. Keep stirring as you go along. I made up this recipe because I was feeling quite lazy and a bit short on time and desperate for something with a bit of caramel in. The sauce is now smooth. The pie's going to be ready in a few minutes. Let's finish up on the cake. To finish up on the cake, some icing sugar, lightly dust. I'm a bit heavy handed sometimes and I do have a few whoopsies. And now the caramel sauce. Just drizzle that over. Work it around the cake. It looks really good. Wow. I think that should do it. Now just a few pecans. Place that on top. That's enough, I think it looks good. That's the cake ready. Time to get the shepherd's pie out the oven. That looks amazing. Let's just check the potato crust. It is quite crispy, just the way I like it. This is what comfort food is to me. A shepherd's pie, crunchy green vegetables, and a pecan banana cake with a caramel sauce. It's absolutely irresistible.